now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, I'm Alex, and this is the Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight on the east coast of the United States of what used to be America. He's in Massachusetts, in Wooster, which is, how's, how's, how's Wooster spelled now? W-O-R-C-E-S-T-E-R. Okay, the Wooster. Wooster. That's like Warren, it's like it's comes. like Elmer Fudd talking about a male chicken. A Wooster. No, you know, because you pronounce it Wooster. Wooster. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you're liking getting being back in Massachusetts, right? Yeah, I, I like that. The, there's family around. Yeah. You know, I, I'm not crazy about the cold. Well, you know, it, it when it gets nice. When you see your first spring day, here's the thing. In California, first spring day comes along and you go, who cares? Right. Right? Right. You know, what's the difference between winter and spring? About two degrees in California. Right? Right. Right, but in, right, right. But in New York, like to, uh, uh, when we're recording this, there's supposed to be a big snowstorm. Okay? Right. And right, it's right, right. and it's colder than hell out there, and it's going to come down, and we're going to be up to our puppets in snow, and 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 it's going to be terrible and horrible, and then your first spring day comes along, and you go, wow, magical, <laughs> yeah, magical. magical. You don't get that in California. No, but that's also like you know the first snowstorm is magical, the very first. Oh yeah, one. oh yeah, yeah. You know, even. New York City looks pretty. Oh, with a fresh coat of snow. With a coat of snow, everything is number one. Everything is uh, prettier, as you said, right. and it's soundproof. You ever get notice how there's that kind of soundproofing that snow yeah. has? If you were yeah. to yell, your yell wouldn't go very far. No, the acoustics suck. Uh, well, the acoustics. I'm, I like the acoustics. You know, it's like a soundproof room, which I'm used to working in. Oh, right. yeah, 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 for years. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, so that, that that's kind of good. Um, and then uh, let me see here. The other thing about, oh, then, then all of a sudden the worst part of the snow is like the second or third day when all of a sudden it turns to slush, and on top of that it's now not white snow any longer. It's, it's gray brown. snow. From oh, all, yeah. From all the soot and all the, the you know, the, and, and cars are going through it, and you've got to wear galoshes because it's this high on the corners. And oh, because don't they, remind me, Alex. Don't yeah. remind me. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, that it, I don't know if it's as bad that way in Worcester. Worcester gets the second most snowfall in the United States besides Buffalo. Really? Yep. Son of a bitch. We get hit by northeasters. Yeah. But I'm, what I'm saying is, that we because of what we have here, which are lots of cars and everything, it just doesn't parse no, out. It goes gray real quick. It goes gray real quick. It right, gets, right. It, get, it gets ugly. But when it first falls, I, I know today, when we finally get a good dusting of it on the ground, Marjorie and I are going to look out the window and say, isn't that gorgeous? Right. You know. And tomorrow you go, why is it still here? No, it's still snowing tomorrow. The day afterwards we go, why is it still here? <laughs> you Are know, you supposed to get snow for two days? Yep. Yep. And and I got to tell you something. Uh, and uh, we have a problem here once again with COVID, okay? We're, it's not right. as bad as the rest of the country because it's, uh, um, I, I think it's a Vermont, I think, Maybe Massachusetts, Hawaii, and then us is the four lowest. I know Massachusetts is one of the lowest, and they're yeah. actually rolling out more stuff. Yeah. So what what happened though is that we still worry that it's gonna, you know, it's gonna hit us not hard as hard, but hard. Yeah. And, and right now we like to what was it a day ago or something we had 126 deaths. 
which when you consider the few months ago, we hit zero. Right, 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 yeah, right. That's quite profound. Uh, and and so we, we, of course, worry about it and do something about it and try and stop it. And yeah, but didn't you tell me half the people in your neighborhood are not wearing masks? Well, the thing that bothers me, okay, I live in Harlem, and Harlem is a predominantly black neighborhood. All right. right? Uh, although more whites have moved in like us, and, you know, it's, it's becoming more residential and more provincial uh, right. than it had been. But we are, uh, and and I so I'm I see a disproportionate amount of black people. Okay, so right. now I'm having to report here on the black population. I can't speak for the white population, but I can talk for the black population. And what I see is a if I walk down the street, I would say sixty percent of the people aren't wearing masks. And those that are wearing them either as chin guards or as mouth guards. Yeah, well, why don't they cover their nose? What the? F well, the thing God is damn that. it, cover your damn nose. You, you have a piece of, 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 of um, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, metal up here. So that yeah. when you put it up, you then bend it to your nose. Right. Okay? And it's, right. that's how you're supposed to use it. But anyway, either they're not doing it right or they don't, no, not doing it at all. I'm asking them walking down the street without them at all. And I keep, I, I've been saying this on the, on the show a lot, and I don't want to sound racist when I say this. I understand why black people are reticent to deal with medicine, okay? Because it has been a point of problem to them in the past yeah. and uh, you know the testing that went on with the Tuskegee experiments and so on I understand that completely and their distrust of the medical profession however you may not want to get a vaccination that I understand although I think you're stupid not to get one but I, I you know if if you don't get one I understand because you've had this history but where's the history that prevents you from wearing a mask you know, and yeah, that's. I don't know. No, no. Are you going to get a uh, vaccine soon? Whenever it's available to me, sure. Now, how do we know when it, when we fit in the in the category to go get a shot? Well, in my neighborhood, they shoot up a flare. No, uh, <laughs> I have I have no idea. All I know is they say that my group, the next group after uh, the workers and the uh, uh, nursing homes is people with uh, 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 medical circumstances. Right. So I don't know if I fall in that category or not. You know, I don't know because of the, of the prostate cancer and the, and, the, and the radiation, does that make me qualified for that group? Uh, I think so. I, th I think so. It, I think so, but then how do they know? Do they send me a note saying, oh, by the way, congratulations, you're sick enough <laughs> to be able to get the... Uh, uh, the, the, co vaccine. the vaccine. And then when I get the vaccine, my wife would not be eligible for it yet because she's about four years younger than me, three years younger than me. Mm -hmm. So she isn't in that 80 and over group. So she probably won't be able to get it for a while after I get mine. And she's going to look at me with, you know, COVID envy or vaccine envy. Right. You know, so I don't know if I should wait for her, uh, you know, but. Um, it depends on how you feel, Alex. Yeah. All I'm saying to people out there is, if you're offered it, take it. You're not going to get COVID. It doesn't even have killed vaccine in it. It doesn't have killed viruses in it. That's right, not, right, right, that's right. not the way they do this one. Right. Uh, uh, and uh, it, it, uh, so far, it looks like, I mean, we've had a lot of people get it now here in New York State already, medical people, and they all seem fine. Right. You right, know, right, right, I, right, right. I wouldn't worry about it. I'd worry more about getting COVID. Okay. Yeah. In other words, yeah. you want to you want to balance them. Uh, vaccine, uh, COVID. I'd say the vaccine's safer. You know what? You know what the most effective and safest thing is? Wearing a mask. Right. 
If so, here's the thing. So I got all they these. Call me a damn nose. I got all these. I, I I watch MSNBC and they're going and blacks are getting the COVID virus disproportionately and they're saying it's because of the medical thing and Tuskegee experiments and all that. But they never once mention it because and also they largely don't wear masks. Nobody mentions that part of it. Right, 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 all right, right. right. Uh, they no, also and don't mention. That the, the major comorbidity among blacks is not being black, but it's that there are a lot of blacks who have carry a great amount of weight. Yes. Okay. And that's a killer when it comes to COVID. Right. And, and that could be because of nutrition. That could be a, a result of a lot of things. But still, it makes you uh, uh, have a comorbidity. It makes you vulnerable to, to COVID. So Actually, wear a cool. mask. Okay. In fact, don't leave your house. If you don't have a mask, don't leave your house. I well, I I I did some I did something wrong the other day. I got in the elevator the other day, and I'm going down, and uh, uh, the, it stops at the third floor, and a woman gets in, and she's not wearing a mask. And I put my hand over my mouth. I have my mask on, so I put my hand over my mouth, kind of to say "fuck you," right? You, you know, and she didn't. That didn't seem to get her. And then we got down to the first floor, and she got a, she, uh, she let me out first, and I got out, and I didn't even leave the door open for her. I just ran. Right, uh, right, right. And and uh, everybody suggested I should just told her no mask. You're not getting in this elevator with me. I'll send it up for you when I get down to the first floor. There you go. You know now, how do you handle that? Like when I see somebody and they're just wearing it like over their mouth, I just want to say. Cover your damn nose. Well, I mean, it's just, it, it just, it, it, it's like you don't care about your fellow person. All right? You know, you're so goddamn selfish, you don't want to wear a mask. No, you don't. Well, the fact is, if everybody in this country tomorrow started wearing a mask, you would see the numbers plummet. Oh, in a heartbeat. Yeah. There's something we can do about it. You know, it's like Cuomo says, you know, if you're, uh, if you're sitting at home and you're eating and you, you're not exercising and stuff, you're gonna gain maybe a, a pound a week. So right. after, oh, four, yeah. after four weeks, you've gained four pounds. He said, right. but you could do something about that by either eating less or working out more or whatever. Right. And he said the same is true with COVID, you know? I mean, we don't do anything, it, it's exponential. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. But you can, right. do, you can do something about it. You can wear a mask. And right. I, nobody likes wearing a mask. They're not fun. No. You know, nobody liked using a condom when AIDS came around, but we had to. Right. And we talked about AIDS is pretty much eradicated. Uh, it is eradicated. <laughs> they just came up with a thing the other day saying AIDS is pretty much a non-starter now. You know. Is that unbelievable? Yeah. Yeah. That we've wiped out one of the most vicious death-dealing uh, diseases to ever oh, hit yeah. this country. We managed to do away with it. Pretty good. Pretty, Not bad. Pretty Not good. Not bad. Yeah, pretty good. So, uh, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm constantly making, giving the same speech over and over again. I'm sure people are tired of it. But, you know, if you care about your fellow person, you care about your neighbor, wear a mask, you know, because you're, right. you're, you're not only protecting yourself, you're protecting them as well. That's you know. right. And, That's right. And if we all wore them, if everybody put a mask on tomorrow, you, you know, the virus would have nowhere to go. Right. Okay? And within a very short time, you'd see numbers just plummet. But no, and, and then people have what's called home spread, living room spread, they're calling it. Is that right? Where during the holidays, oh, well, you know, I don't want to go out because there's COVID out there. I'll invite my neighbors in or I'll invite my family in. Right. <laughs> Bingo. 74% right. in New York State, 74% of all cases of COVID have really? been related to home spread. Okay. So, folks, it isn't that safe. All right. Right. And uh, wear a mask or blow me. One or the other. I don't care. <laughs> Take the mask off first. Yeah, that should be that should be you. I should get a mask that says that. Wear a mask or blow me. I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
And people will probably start to offer blowing me over wearing a mask, you know. So I, <laughs> what do I do then? But anyway, listen, have a happy uh, holiday season. Yeah, you too. And as two, happy birthday. As two Jews, uh, pretty much our holiday has already passed. So, you know, we have nothing to look forward to. No, Christmas sucks in my house. Yeah, yeah, Christmas sucks in your house. Well, you know, I, quickly, I, I love the story about Michael Pritchard and I in Union Square singing Christmas songs. And all of a sudden, they come up with the little town of Bethlehem or Silent Night or something like that, which is really very religious. Right. And I'm humming. I'm not singing. And Pritchard looks at me, who's an ex-alcoholic, and says to me, Oh, come on, Alex, sing. It couldn't hurt. And I look back at him, or up at him, actually, because huh. <laughs> he's very tall. And I said, Come on, Michael, have a drink. Couldn't hurt. There you go. <laughs> Anyway, have a nice holiday season, you and, too, Alex. and I will uh, I will see you. Uh, at, at, I think about the time Kwanzaa is here, so okay. Uh, uh, stay right where you are, so I can talk to you after this is over. But this is uh, this is Steve Kravitz. He I, he I, he's fun. I look forward to these gets togethers with him. We have our little chats. This is our, our fireside chat. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Say goodbye to him. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, and if you heard of me, wish him a happy holiday season and a whole bunch of other things. That's because that was recorded before Christmas. <laughs> and I just wanted to, I wanted to get it played off because uh, we go to all the trouble of doing them in the first place. Uh, so I figured I would... Uh, I would uh, play it off. And uh, um, uh, next week will be a brand new one. All right? Okay. Uh, and uh, occasion because we do these things, you know, I do them in the afternoon. And, and we play them back. And he's so entertaining. I just I didn't want to waste uh, a, a single morsel with him. So we played an old one. So if you're wondering why I wished him a happy uh, Christmas and so on, uh, it's because uh, that's what time of the year it was. So, you know, one Jew wishing another a happy Christmas. Wow. Happy holiday season is the term we use. And, oh, look, I got a new t shirt. Look at that. Vintage 1939, limited edition, right? Okay. Yeah. And I got another one now that uh, for 81 years, okay? Every year I'm going to buy a new one till I can't buy anymore and then you guys can buy them for me and drop them on my grave okay all right isn't that depressing anyway let me see here uh, i gotta get everything ready here and there are a whole wow there are a whole bunch of people waiting to come on so uh, uh i may as well uh uh, uh b you know let them uh, all get together here they are they're coming on uh, and uh, let's see here. There's, uh, there's. Well, Brian Neary is there somewhere. Um, he's connecting to audio. Uh, Charlie Wallace. There's Charlie. Charlie's been waiting since, well, since before we started the show tonight. You just kind of like get into the waiting room and stay there, right? And there's uh, Mr. Uh, 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 Natali, Robert Natali, and uh, of course there's Jeff. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll be joined by other people as well. Um, oh, gee, it's kind of dark in there tonight, Brian. You could use a little light. You could use a little light. Brian's got the fifth Studio 54 effect on. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah. yeah. I was there many days. Not that one, the Vegas one. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Friends were DJs and bouncers there, so... 2000 to 2003, I was there like every other month for a week. Really? Weekend. Do you know that in all the time, I was in New York when Studio 54 was around, and I never went to Studio 54. Never. Not once. Uh, wouldn't be caught dead in the place. I was, uh, I was a hippie. I had the long hair. I wasn't wearing the platform shoes, although... In, that, in those days, when you wanted to buy shoes, you almost had to buy platform shoes because that's all they were selling, okay? And when you went to go buy jeans, the only thing they had were bell bottoms. So you had to dress that dress even though you didn't want to. And, uh, yeah. 
the, the, the <laughs> title of my college radio show was Disco Sucks. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, and it truly did. Oh, God. You know, if you think about it, to this day, now we're talking 40 years later, mm-hmm. you can find an outlet to hear music from the 50s, the 60s. You can hear classic rock. You can hear country, bluegrass, blues. You can hear damn near every style of music. Yep, but you can't find a disco station. There's anymore. no disco stations. Can't. No, you're right. There you may be, can't find there it. There may be some songs from that era. Like yeah, few, stay, there are a few. Like Staying Alive and, yeah. uh, you know, some of the stuff that was done out of Philadelphia. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, and they weren't bad. You know, they weren't terrible. Uh, but uh, what you could do in those days, what, what, who did we lose? We lost. Uh, yeah. We lost Jeff. Yeah. Jeff. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, in those days, uh, you could take just about anybody and have them sing to a disco beat. Yeah. And in fact, I have a, a, a number by Frank Sinatra where he did the first song he ever recorded, uh, All or Nothing at All. And he sang it to a disco arrangement, and it worked. He didn't have to change his style. He didn't have to change the way he sang it. You know, it was just uh, done to that 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 horrible beat that they had. I, you know, I I I think I missed really missed disco. It never it never never became a big deal for me. Okay, so uh, here we go. Here's here's Jeff again. Uh, Jeff, pu- you push the wrong button, Jeff. Well, I, I don't just, know. Yeah, yeah, we are. It's just not working well. Really? So, yeah. I you think know, I must have some little bug in this. Uh, I, 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 I might just have to wait uh, to uh, say this until something really goes wrong. But I don't think I've ever had Zoom go bad on us on the show. Have I? No. You know? It's about as solid as possible. I thought about going back one night and doing a show, a retro show on <clears> Skype and see what happened. But uh, I bet it sucks. You know, is anybody, you've had, huh? You've had bad guests on Zoom, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have any bad ones. Well, he, he, he can find one, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Know exactly who he is in my. Yeah, I know who exactly. <laughs> it is one that we know. <laughs> well, nice. Well, you know, I like to have Phil on because we're, we're such a liberal bunch here. We're such a left wing <laughs> nut job people here that uh, I, I do like that other thinking. I mean, I don't agree with it and it's stupid. And I, you know, a guy who I like very much for at least a half hour turns into a moron. But, you know, I nevertheless, I like that other opinion being there. And uh, and since we have a pretty civil discussion, um, it, it, uh, I just like it for balance. You know, I, I missed Phil, not, his part of it not being here because I felt, you know. I agree with you. It isn't. It isn't Phil's point of view that I have a problem with. It's that Phil never deals from the facts do you want me to read you You know if somebody came on a right winger came on and had salient (laughs) points to make Mm -hmm. then it would be a fun discussion it really would i have a few right wing friends and we have we go back and forth all the time but it's stimulating but when you just quote shit that you hear from hannity and (laughs) and treat it as fact it, it there's no discussion to have yeah, well, let me let me read you something. <laughs> Phil sent this to me today, and and I, you know, it was a, a private message on Facebook. But he didn't say, "Don't say this, don't read this out." So I'm going to read it, and uh, I hope he's not mad at me. Hold your breath, everybody. You're going to piss your pants. Okay. I never Phil's thought. A friend. I Phil's never. A friend th- of mine. I never thought I would be so disappointed in Trump. Wow. Don't, don't read anymore. Just leave it like yeah, that. Leave it there. <laughs> no, Stop. No, <laughs> delete. 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 And why didn't he say that last night? Well, I don't think it had gotten that far. 
Oh, you know, okay. I mean, not enough had come out and so on and so forth. And he said his actions did not call for entering, did not, his actions did not call for entering the Capitol, nor did he tell them to go into the Capitol uh, to intimidate our elected officials. He did not anticipate what happened, and that mistake was a rookie move. You know, I if, did, Phil, if Phil ever came on and said, I'm seeing Trump in a different light, I wouldn't lord it over him. I, I would say congratulations. Good for you. Well, I think the fact that he said he's disappointed in Trump, I think, is enough. I mean, if you've disappointed Phil, you've disappointed your base. OK. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and I think that's important. And uh, I, I disagree with him. I think that he was kind of encouraging him. You know? Oh, me too. It's kind of yeah. like, I'll go to you in a second, Charlie. So remind me that I wanted to go to you next. Uh, I remember the movie, uh, what was it, uh, the one, uh, Beckett, in which the king wants people, his people to go out and kill Beckett. But he goes, oh, I can't live with this any longer. As long as that man is alive, I'm going to be in just uh, just uh, horrible, depressed, whatever, you know. Now, he isn't telling them to go out and kill him. Yeah, right. But he's giving them the ammunition. And that's exactly what Trump did yesterday. No, I don't think he said, go in there and then go trash the place. No, he didn't say that. <laughs> but his implication was, you know where the capital is, go down there. And, and, and now what they're trying to say is that actually the people who were doing the mischief inside were Antifa. Yeah, give me a break. <laughs> so they went down to the Trump supporter store and bought, you know, Trump flags, Trump hats. Like, I want to see where this store is that you can go to overnight. <laughs> you know, come on. You know how much, you know how expensive a Trump flag must be? Oh, Jesus. You know, and those things, I guess, were for sale. Jesus Christ. You know, uh, but um, uh, they, um, uh, you know, I mean, they were ready for this, by the way. I mean, they, I saw some pictures of them going in there. They had the gear to break windows. They yep. had the gear to do everything. Yes, Charlie. I want to yeah, and that, that's exactly why I disagree with you. That is exactly what Trump intended. And that's exactly what happened. And he, he, he was sitting there cackling at it, watching it on TV. Yes. They had to go to him multiple times and beg him to send the National Guard. He would not do it. Finally, Mike Pence had to do it. And tonight, tonight in a speech, he took credit for sending in the National Guard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, when, when and he, didn't, went, even, he well, didn't even care about Pence, and Pence's family was there. He yeah. didn't care. I mean, By it, the way... It Did was you hear no, the but, but bulletin was, about the archaeological discovery at the Capitol building? A bunch of Republicans dug real deep and found their morals and ethics. It was a <laughs> tremendous discovery. Did they find uh, 10,000 votes? Yeah. Uh, 11,000. Give it time. <laughs> but yeah. Trump told them, we are going to go down to the Capitol. Yeah. And then That's Trump right. stayed where he was or went yeah. to the White House and sent them down. Yeah, I'll be there with you. <laughs> he whipped them up into a frenzy, sent them to the Capitol. He knew exactly what he was well, doing. Well, he said march down, uh, down Pennsylvania Avenue to the Capitol. You know, he didn't tell him go in there and smash the place up. But that's you know, what he did. He told not, him, I'm sorry. He was doing a wink, wink, nod, nod. He was telling them well, exactly to go in there but, and tear things up. That's why Trump they had juniors, all the equipment to do look, it. Look, look, I'm going to. And, and the I'm, juniors revved people up, I heard, too. Oh, I heard Trump how? Junior, oh, I didn't see that, but I heard they're revving up the crowds, too. Oh, I think they were revving them up more than Trump was. He and, oh, and, and uh, Rudy Giuliani. Go watch your tape, Brian. Oh yeah, yeah. I can imagine. Let's have, let's have a trial by battle or something. Is what Giuliani said. Oh, yeah. What the and fuck the does that mean? It. It... Yeah. 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 There's another guy repeating it and yelling it to the crowd, and then uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it was. It, it's kind of like um, uh, he didn't have to say what he wanted them to do. He could just oh. imply it. You know. Yep. You got to show these people what side you're on. Yeah. yeah, you got to be strong. Yeah. Well, you're not going to take our country back by being weak. Here's the thing. 
Uh, I've always had a rule, as I've told you, in doing talk shows, for instance, that at no time do I want to give anybody a sense of permission, mm -hmm. okay? It's very easy to do that. You know, I think every night um, uh, Hannity goes on the air and gives people a sense of permission to act in negative ways. And I just don't think you do that because you're harming them and you're harming the public in general and you don't want to say something that's going to give somebody a sense of permission to do something. Um, and so, therefore, I would never let the discourse get to a point where it seemed like we were giving a sense of permission for anything. Uh, and it, but that's what Trump was doing. He was giving them permission, yeah. you know, without coming he's out. Done, he, 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 he's done that several times. Remember the guy that yeah. shot, shot. Who was he shooting up? And then he had the van with all this stuff on it. And yeah, yeah. yeah. Every time he says something about oh they're pa they're not patriots, but before he was saying they're good people on both sides. All that stuff. He's given the permission for all of that stuff. I don't think a single person there. Yes, and and by the way, let let's just give these people some credit yesterday that a, a good majority of them didn't go there to break into the Capitol and to terrorize people, okay? Right. They went there because they wanted to go to the Capitol and protest their grievance about what was going on, and that's perfectly legitimate, and I have, I have nothing against that. But it was the thousand or so people yeah. that went inside and did the trashing and sat in Nancy Pelosi's office smoking a cigar or whatever that guy was doing. Um, and the security guards that let them. And the security yeah. guards selfies. who were taking selfies, selfies with them. Was. Taking selfies with them. I mean, there is, a, mm -hmm. there is a theory now out there that this whole th scenario was let to happen. Aided and abetted. Aided and yeah. abetted. You know, uh, by who? Uh, by, I guess, certain people who were part of the police contingent uh, who believed that it was, uh, you know, the thing to do. And it took forever for the National Guard to get there. Yeah. yeah. Did you hear Biden talk about, I missed part of it, but he was saying about how, it, you know, I think it was his granddaughter or somebody was talking to him and saying if that was... If it was Black Lives Matter doing that, that things would happen a lot worse, you know. Other things, things would happen totally different. Well, I, you know, I, I would. That's a good argument. Okay, it's a good argument. I don't know that it's it's a legitimate argument because it wasn't Black Lives Matter, so we don't know how they would have handled right. it. Okay, right. I've you know, heard they that. They did it last but, June. Well, but I, I think, but my point is to hear Biden talk about that stuff is the kind of stuff that we need heard. You know. We, it can't be something that's not talked about. And for me to hear Biden talk like that, it reassures me how I think he's going to be. Well, you see, I think it's legitimate to protest. God knows I've been in enough protests in my lifetime. Who? You know? Yeah. And 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 uh, uh, some that were uh, were quite noisy and quite uh, quite threatening. All right. Uh, but I. Uh, but in that case, we were protesting the war in Vietnam, for instance, and we were protesting lives being lost to that, um, to the war, and that we felt that we were saving lives by being overt, okay, um, and that these people shouldn't go anywhere without knowing how we felt about them. It's like I tell the story about how I went to a Broadway show Kissinger was sitting right in front of me, and when they finally introduced him from the stage during the curtain call, uh, everybody applauded, and I started booing in his ear because my feeling was he should not be allowed to go anywhere without knowing there are people that are upset by his decisions, you know? They can't go around thinking that everywhere they go, everybody loves them for what they're doing. Now, that is legitimate. Uh, I was tackled to the floor, by the way. Uh, and uh, it, But that was legitimate, uh, I feel. Uh, but this isn't legitimate because what you're doing here is you're protesting for a guy who's trying to keep his job. <laughs> I mean, it, it's almost bizarre that you would go out of your way to this extent that a woman would put her life on the line and get killed over Donald Trump. I mean, come on, he doesn't care about you. You know, and he was told probably... He hadn't even mentioned her. 
No, he didn't mention her. Yeah. Uh, she, by the way, was a uh, a, a, a fringe nut. You know, yeah, they they have a they have, they have a video of her Trump's ranting from her car. Uh, and it's 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 insane rants. It's not logical rants. All right, that doesn't mean she deserves to die. Uh, and I, we and nobody's explained what happened and who shot her. No, no. It and you know, usually something like this happens. Somebody from the police will have a press conference and tell what happened. Yeah, not a peep. Not a thing. Yeah, not a quick. <laughs> yeah, no. The chief did. Yeah, I, s hmm? I I saw them take her out. Mm -hmm. See that? There was like six guys mm -hmm. were wheeling her out. Right. She was, she was very dead. And that okay. didn't seem that didn't seem to stop them from protesting. Yeah. You would have thought really. that would have stopped everything dead, and everybody would have just backed off and left. Hey. I, I frankly don't buy the idea that there were a thousand people who were there peaceably. I really don't. I think the purpose of everyone there was to intimidate. Yeah. I really do. I think the overall purpose of people that gathered was to intimidate lawmakers into thinking that there would be repercussions if they didn't act according to this overthrow the election idea i what? think they went there with malintent now did they all you know did they all wake up that morning thinking i'm going to sit in the you know the senate chamber maybe not but i think their their intent wasn't to peaceably protest mm -hmm. i think they went there with anger in their heart looking to intimidate and make others understand that this just wouldn't flush yeah 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 uh, we've been joined by uh, John Larkin, by the way. Hi. Uh, hi, how you doing? I'm okay. How are you, Alex? Good, good. Mm -hmm. um, we're talking about, you know, still talking about what went on yesterday and yeah. some of what's happened today now. I, 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 first of all, I want to just say to, to Congress that I'm proud of them. I mean, I haven't said that in a long time. But I'm proud of the fact that in spite of being intimidated, they decided to keep going until, you know, it, I don't know how late it went, maybe one in the morning, two in the morning. Oh, something like that. Turned it off at four. And I think yeah. the miracle of the whole thing is, is that Diane Feinstein stayed awake. Yeah. That's what I found amazing. <laughs> because yesterday, while some people were giving a speech, she was going. <laughs> yeah. And while I think that's entirely called for because of some of these speeches, I, I do think yeah. that, you know, that you stay awake. Got it. They, I, I was trying to find out, but did they explain the three medical emergencies? I haven't seen that. Some of these guys have heart attacks, these old guys or something? I don't know. I'm sure, you know, you, you, well, to begin with, I want to know after the fact how many of these people get COVID. I mean, that was the I biggest know. super spreader event I've seen all year long. Yeah. You know, yeah, and it's it's about a week after uh, New Year, so you should see some kind of separation. Well, that what what sure. what's happened? What happened here? And the reason I say it's really a super spreader event, it's probably going to be worse than other events. I mean, when Trump held a rally, people were standing there and they were next to each other and they were close and they weren't wearing uh, uh, they weren't wearing the proper gear, you know, the masks and so on. But, but. They weren't shouting and screaming and sweating and doing all the things that would spread the disease, okay? And I think there's going to be a large surge among that they group. Better, they better hope they don't have that other mutated yeah. name either, or they're all done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that's the English flu? The English yeah. flu. Yeah, you keep. <laughs> Actually, they say this one they think came from Africa. So it's those mm. damn black people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's your, it's your fault, Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, uh, you haven't given us a death count today. It's pretty bad. It was today. a brand new record. We the, set another record for the third time in the last week. Get this, folks. Three thousand nine hundred ninety-eight. Oh. Almost 4,000 people too died Too short today. of 4,000. Let's say it's 4,000 because I'm sure there are two we missed. Yeah. All right? 
Uh, hey. Four thousand in one day. Hey. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Just amazing. You know, and I, you know, uh, I, I just. It makes me so mad when I think of how all of this could have been avoided, you know, or at least minimized. I don't think it could have been avoided entirely, but I think it could have been minimized. But when you look at the Trump rallies, there was no way we're going to be able to have those people in control to have masks. Yeah, but I mean, what happens is actions and and morality and everything starts at the top, okay? Yeah. Uh, uh, Ashley Montague, who wrote a book on the elephant man, which I optioned to make a movie out of it, and uh, somebody else decided to do it instead since, you know, they didn't need to option the book to do it. Uh, But I I interviewed Ashley Montague, and uh, we were talking about, he had written the book The Elephant Man, and he was talking about how he became very fashionable in London. Uh, all, uh, All the aristocracy wanted to hang out with him, and... You know, he was a kind of a decent guy and, you know, very smart, very intelligent, and he just looked horrible, that's all, He's, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, we started talking about what, you know, what becomes fashionable and how fashion is dictated, and he says fashion is dictated in the old days, at least in those days, by royalty. If royalty mm-hmm. wore a fl- frilly tie, then everybody else started wearing frilly ties. You know, they wore ruffles mm-hmm. on their on their shirt. They, they wore ruffles on their shirts, and that that's how fashion was dictated. And I said, well, how is it dictated today? And he said, well, our royalty, our movie stars, music stars, mm-hmm. things like that. And um, the point I guess I'm trying to make here is is that what he indicated was is that behavior in a society is created many times by the people who are fashionable. And in the case of the president of the United States, he is uh, he said the president, for instance, is a good example of someone who can dictate tastes and how people act and their morality and so on. And this has always rung true with me as I watched this whole thing going down and saying, if this guy had just worn a mask, if he had just said, wear a mask, how many lives would be here today that aren't here now? I think it's far simpler than we make it. Look, politically speaking, Trump's greatest path to re-election was to emphasize the economy. For good, bad, or indifferent, this was his linchpin. He, he felt he that thought he, he thought he thought that yeah. if he kept selling the idea of the economy, that he could win. COVID comes along and the necessary shutdowns, and they were a mosquito on his ass. And the only way that he could re-emphasize the economy was to minimize COVID. That's correct. But here's oh, where, here, that from the first. Here's where he missed a huge, a huge uh, opportunity. If he had just simply handled this properly, he could have real, gotten reelected without even blinking. Say it here all the time. Huh? I agree. Yeah, I, agree. I mean, that's how stupid this man was, is that he thought it was the economy and that COVID was ruining the economy, therefore he had to minimize COVID. What he could have said is, this is my opportunity to seize yep. the moment. Yes. Carpe diem. And, 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 uh, and save lives and, and so on and so forth. And even if I don't believe it, forget it, if you believe it or don't believe it. Put the nation uh, on a wartime footing, and right. nobody, nobody get, bumps an incumbent out of office during wartime. Right. They want to gather around the leader and mm-hmm. exert a patriotism. And if he, he if, but, but if he had just done something about it, just done something about it, it would have been fine. It would have been terrific. Would have cut, would have cut his mouth shut and let the scientists handle it. Yeah. It would have been golden, you know, but. He's an egomaniac. He can't keep his mouth shut. Well, he felt that, uh, tr- that, that uh, oh, I don't know. In his mind, I think he actually thinks the Chinese created COVID so that it would make him look bad. Yeah. You know? And I'm sorry. <laughs> the whole world does not think, oh, what are we going to do to fuck up Donald Trump today? You know? Yes, uh, Charlie. And the proof of that is he thinks all those votes in Pennsylvania and Georgia were completely valid. 
for every election <laughs> except the president. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Right. Okay. It, 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 hey, it, it, Tony, you okay? You, get, you just keep your camera on. Come back. Yeah, yeah you know what? She's she's calling me, Alex. I'll be right there. Okay, we can be, go right. go take care of mom um, because he's got some interesting stories about his What's relationship to COVID. Uh, but in, anyway, in other news today: Merrick Garland. How's that for a karma is a bitch? Oh, I love it. I yeah, love right. it. I love it. <laughs> and and he's going to get he's going to get approved. Because all yeah. of the cabinet is yeah. going to get approved. Oh, sure. Because it's just going to be, here's who I want. Okay, you got him. Okay, yeah. well, you only get 50 votes. Oh, yeah, here comes Kamala. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, uh, I mean, uh, what is so wonderful about all of this is, is that Biden is going to be able to do what he needs to do to get this country on the right course yep. without flinching. Two weeks, you know, two, uh, two years. Huh? He'll have two years. He'll have yeah. two, he'll have two years, and if he does a good enough job, he might have another two. He might have four. Yeah, he yeah. might have four. Right. You know, uh, and Schumer gets to decide what gets brought to the Senate floor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know how many things that uh, McTurtle guy has been sitting on for how long? Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're using McTurtle now too, huh? I love it. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I used to call him he with no chin. Well, look, when I was a kid, <laughs> when I was a kid, how many of you ever read comic books and they said, if you can draw this turtle, mm. yeah, we'll give you, guide. you can get a, guide. you can get an art scholarship, draw yeah. your Remember? little turtle or whatever his name was. And I swear to you, in my mind, if I remember the picture of that turtle, it looks just like Mitch McConnell. Yeah, they had that in the back of the little TV guides. Remember the little yeah, TV guides? Yeah, yeah. yeah, but comic books were the places where I saw them the most. Matchbook covers. Uh, they were a little too small to have the picture of Draw Me, but it was always that damn turtle. Yeah. You know, or, or, or the Civil War guy with the Civil War hat on. Oh, really? Was there one of those too? I remember he had the, yeah. the Civil War cap on. Yeah. I, I drew it one time and it was perfect, and I thought. Ma, I go, Mom, Mom, look, now, I can go to college. <laughs> now, now, before I went on, um, uh, I saw that Betsy DeVos just mm -hmm. quit. Yeah, yeah wow. And, and she yeah, quit. How in, will we she, know the difference? Well, well, <laughs> yeah. But she quit in protest. She didn't just say, I'm resigning. She quit in protest, saying, I'm resigning because I cannot put up with what the president did yesterday. Yeah. Okay. So good job. You know, they're all, I'll tell you, it's, it's like, you know, it's it's a 12-hour a, a, a conversion, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, it's all of a sudden, crap. it's all of a sudden, they, there it is, there's the turtle. <laughs> well, or is that, is that a bird? Is that a bird, <laughs> Ray? You got to turn on your mic. That's the turtle. That's, That's the it. turtle. Move it aside. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Isn't that Mitch That's McConnell? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean, it, 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 you just think about it, and it's uh, it's amazing um, uh, that uh, the, a lot of these twelfth hour conversions. And now it looks like, to begin with, uh, uh, Ted Cruz is almost not even he he may as well quit because yeah. he is so vilified today because of his standing for being one of the people that was, you know, and then this other asshole, Noah Hawley. Okay. Yeah. No, well, Josh did you Hawley. hear about the last minute thing that happened with Noah Hawley? Simon and Schuster canceled his book contract. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. He had a book that was going to be published and uh, they have canceled it. And he goes, they're censoring me. Yeah. No, right. they're not. They're, they're a company, and they say, hey, we like your book. We think it'll make us money. Uh, we'll publish it. Oh, you just fucked up. You did all of this. Nobody's going to want to buy that book. We don't want to pay yeah. for it. Goodbye. Yeah. I mean, it's not, where, where did he get the idea that all of a sudden this was part of uh, freedom of speech, the fact that you got a book contract? You know, I guess, uh, because I don't have a book contract, uh, that I'm being denied my freedom of speech. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. And if, if it's all Simon and Schuster's fault, or, yes. or or any one of a number of kind of Scribner's. Uh, you know. No, I'm sorry. 
You, you, you really screwed up. You did something which they think most people believe that you're complicit. Yeah, he is. In what happened. Are you there, Tony? No, I guess he's not. His yeah. camera just went down. His, his camera collapsed. Yeah, it collapsed. Yeah. As yeah. COVID. It has COVID, <laughs> yeah. But uh, I was so happy to see uh, see him lose his uh, his book contract, and, and and the way he's griping about it is just oh we just lost him, uh, is really silly, you know. I mean you, you you can't gripe about that. It's their it's their it's their company. They can do with it what they want to. And if they didn't appreciate what you did yesterday, and they feel that he, it made you negative in the eyes mm -hmm. of the public, and that it's going to make it much harder to sell that book, and it's going to make them look bad for publishing it, they goodbye. Tell him to go fund his own book then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Go pay for all that stuff yourself. Yeah, go on Parlor and sell the goddamn thing, you know? Yep. Uh, Bounce around the Parlor a little bit. It's yeah. pretty funny. And to you, that, you to, definitely to, get the people, there, there's people in Parlor that are don't like what happened yesterday. And there's a lot of people there just a lot of nonsense. Now, there's the new, um, there's the new um, wrinkle in all of this is that Trump, Finally, tonight, made a video. Um, it, it, it's him fucking Stormy Daniels. No, uh, it's uh, uh, him, him saying, decrying, decrying the violence that went on yesterday. De decrying it and saying that, uh, you know, he said, listen, I sent out the National Guard. You know, you got to give me credit. I sent out the National Guard, and I'm thinking right away. That's not what I oh, heard. Yeah. I heard yeah. that it was it oh, was Pence happened? that you wouldn't do it, and Pence had the the ability to do it, so he did it. Uh, Where and is this video available. Uh, what? Where can you see this video? Uh, it it's uh, it's out there. If I go to oh okay. Uh, if I go to to mm -hmm. wait, wait, wait a minute. It was, on, it was on uh, it's MSNBC. Yeah, well, it's it's all, you can go to YouTube. You can go to YouTube. Oh okay. Wait a minute. Let me go. To it was YouTube. on that guy's account, Chrisman or Chrisman or whatever his name is. Hmm. Uh, let me Chris see Hayes. here. Uh, bu 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 bum, uh, news. Uh, let me see here. Where is it? Uh, Trump. I don't know. It's, it's usually it's always in news, but uh, it's not even worth life. looking at, huh? It, it's it's not oh, worth looking BS. at. Oh, here we go. It well, looks like he's it's a hostage video, you know? Yeah, yeah, it does. yeah. He said, <laughs> "Guns hell." Yeah. I can play it here, but I got to get past a couple of things like the commercial. It ain't worth it. Uh, and, no, don't do that. Well, I just, I'd like you to hear it only because I want you to be able to comment on it. Uh, I'd like to veto it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll just suggest to all of you that you go, you know, go look at it. Okay. Everybody be quiet when I play it because it's on the same pot that you're all on. And uh, I will unmute this the minute that. Uh, um, What's his name? The guy that came over from Fox and went to CNBC. Uh, Shepard Smith. Shepard Smith. Smith. Uh, okay, here we go. Begin okay. by addressing I, the I, heinous attack okay. on the United you, States you go, Capitol. You know, like all Americans, I am outraged by okay, the violence, be quiet. Well, lawlessness, and mayhem. I immediately oh, deployed the National Guard and, uh, and federal law enforcement to that, secure uh, the building uh, and expel uh, the intruders. America is and must always be a nation of law and order. The demonstrators who infiltrated the Capitol have defiled the seat of American democracy. To those who engaged in the acts of violence and destruction, you do not represent our country. And to those who broke the law, you will pay. We have just been through an intense election, and emotions are high. But now tempers must be cooled and calm restored. We must get on with the business of America. My campaign vigorously pursued every legal avenue to contest the election results. My only goal was to ensure the integrity of the vote. In so doing, I was fighting to defend American democracy. Yeah. I continue to strongly believe that we must reform our election laws <laughs> to verify the identity and eligibility of all voters and to ensure faith and confidence in all future elections. 
Now Congress has certified the results. A new administration will be inaugurated on January 20th. My focus now turns to ensuring a smooth, orderly, and seamless transition of power. This moment calls for healing and reconciliation. 2020 has been a challenging time for our people. A menacing pandemic has upended the lives of our citizens, isolated millions in their homes, damaged our economy, and claimed countless lives. Defeating this pandemic and rebuilding the greatest economy on Earth will require all of us working together. It will require a renewed emphasis on the civic values of patriotism, faith, charity, community, and family. We must revitalize the sacred bonds of love and loyalty that bind us together as one national family. To the citizens of our country, serving as your president has been the honor of my lifetime. And to all of Not my ours. wonderful supporters, I know you are disappointed, but I also want you to know that our incredible journey is only just beginning. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless America. <laughs> oh, boy. That was I his get out of jail death later. Death more yeah. uplifting. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, just beginning. Are you, the please, best. Please well, it, it is the closest he's come to actually, um, yeah. um, uh, you know, admitting he law. Don't say it. Don't say we'll see. Well, but someone told me he it. had to do that, or he might end up arrested. Well, I'm trying to get barf out of my beard. Yeah. <laughs> I don't believe it for a second. No, of course, of shit. course not, of course not. You know, and the you know the question is, okay, why didn't you say this uh, the night after the election? Yeah. You know, he doesn't. Um, uh, by the way, Penn says he's going to the inauguration. Okay, uh, but I'm yeah. sure Trump won't be there. I'm sure he doesn't want he they don't want him there I don't think you know um I mean for him to do this now at this point is so ingenuous I mean how if he, how he feels that the American public is suddenly going to think better of him for having said this tonight when we all know that the pressure was on him I mean everybody told him you don't do something you know your legacy is shit. Well, his legacy is shit anyway. Yeah, it's too late. It's too yeah. late, you know. Yeah. His legacy is... This, this is a frosting on the legacy cake, what happened yesterday, <laughs> you know. I mean, he's already got a horrible legacy, but his Thank legacy you. now is just... It's pathetic. It's he's going to be hard. a man without a country, you know. He's a seditionist. That would be and, nice. and, he, he won't pardon himself because he thinks he'll go blind. What? <laughs> <laughs> he won't pardon himself because he thinks he'll go blind. You know? I don't because get of that. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> because of that. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'll just, I do. I'll just do it till I'm nearsighted, right? <laughs> I'll bet you. I have, a, I have a theory. I bet you that he's dead within a year. It could be. And I'll tell you why. I'll buy that. L look, look at Roger Ailes. Yeah. The minute he no longer had Fox, yeah. a year later, he didn't even die of something, you know, like he had a disease and died. He fell, hit his head, and hemorrhaged and died. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. You, you know, even something like that is kind of self-inflicted. And well, I just think this man... With the kind of hatred that is going to be, you know, he can't go back to Mar-a-Lago. He can't live there. He doesn't dare come back to New York City. I mean, forget it. That that's it's all over for him in New York City. Where's he going to go? Scotland? They won't let. They don't. They don't want him at that goddamn golf course. Go to Russia. He, he was giving. Wasn't he giving uh, the heart the Medal of Honor to some golfers today? <laughs> Yes. That's the one I don't get. I mean, what the hell was that? Why do you <laughs> give a medal of honor to a golfer? Well, it's that thing that they give to people in sports. It's something. The one, it's the one they let them cheat. No, but is it a medal? Yeah. Of, is it a medal of honor? Thank you no, for it's not, not a medal of honor. It's it's no, but it was a medal. No, athletes. but they announced that he was giving out the medal of honor. Well, it's this yeah. medal that they give to old athletes. They've been doing it for a long time. That they give to no. old athletes. Okay. Yeah. Let me wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me just look this up. Medal of Honor. Somebody else just got it a few weeks ago. Who was that? Um, 
But I think that was somebody. Tennis who player. I think. Oh, was it a tennis player? Or I think it was yeah, Devin but, Nunes and uh, Jim Jordan. Yeah, but people are busting in the Capitol and the day after he's giving out these awards. I, I, I think Trump will probably just choke on a McNugget or something. <laughs> uh, a Medal of Freedom for three golf. <laughs> Medal of Freedom. Yeah. Chicken They'll wing. find him in bed dead from the uh, okay, McNugget. Okay, here, here they are. <laughs> Uh, professional freedom. golfers Annika Sorenstam yeah. and Gary Player yeah. and posthumously Babe Dietrichson Zaharias. Only one is an American. Yeah. Oh, she's old. That Gary babe. Player. He's dead. She's been uh, dead Gary for Player centuries. Is South African. Yeah. 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 Well, Gary well, who's South African? Gary, Gary Player. Player. Gary Player. Gary Player, South African. Okay. And Anika, he retired Annika like 20 years ago. Yeah. Uh, Sorenstam. She's Swedish, if yeah. memory serves me. Yeah. So how does she get the Presidential Medal of Honor? You got me. Yeah. Hey, yesterday there was that? an award. A, a guy walked out of the Capitol with an entire podium as an yeah. award. Yeah. yeah. Did he, yes, he did. I saw that. But they probably had some other. Some guy had Nancy Pelosi's door plaque. <laughs> yeah. Piece of it. You, you I'm not on eBay right now. Yeah, right. Check. Do you yeah. know there, there was, I, I don't know who it was exactly, but there was one um, um, uh, congresswoman who wrote her husband a note and said, here's where my will is. Yes. Yeah. I'm going yeah. to the Capitol for this today, but here's where my will is just in case something happens. It's almost like they knew it was going to happen. Yeah. You know, and nothing Everybody was. Knew and, Trump had that rally, and nothing was done about it. Nothing. There was, there was a congresswoman on Morning Joe, not today, but yesterday, and she said, um, "No, what? It was last night. It wasn't Morning Joe. I think it was Brian Williams' show." And and she said that they were told they had to get the hell off the floor, so they herded them, a group of them, into these side rooms, mm -hmm. and she happened to be in a room with about eight Republican males, and she looked at them, and they were all in this tiny room, and not a one of them was wearing a mask, yep. and so she said to them, you know, I don't feel secure here with you guys not wearing a mask, and they began an argument with her on the grounds that their personal rights were being infringed. Hmm. You know, and she thought to herself, even now, you know, like Jesus Christ. She got up and left, by the way. You know she what you do a, if you're a decent person? <laughs> you know, we're talking about just common courtesy here. If somebody says she feels uncomfortable because all you guys aren't wearing masks and I don't want to get COVID, and I would appreciate it if you would put your masks on. You do it as a courtesy. Forget about any, you know, like, I have the right not to wear a mask. Not really. You know, I mean, uh, when uh, you go into a, uh, into a beachfront uh, uh, bar and they say, all patrons must have shoes on. Do you say, I have the right not to wear shoes? Yeah, get I mean, it's bullshit. I mean, this is like, come on, have some respect for your fellow man. I mean, what the Republican Party is going to have to go do Republican Party 2.0. They got to really get that one going because they've engendered so much bad will. And what he did yesterday just was the frosting on the cake. I mean, guys like Hawley, Hawley, they're trying to get they're trying to actually throw Hawley out of the Senate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, saying that he yeah. helped incite that riot, and they're thinking about doing the same thing to Tom, uh, to Tom Cruise, Ted, Ted Cruz, Ted yeah. Cruz, and Tom Cruise as well. Uh, <laughs> no, Tom Cruise is good. No, I mean it really was. Um, uh, it was terrible on their part, being a part of all. And then afterwards, you would think that after all of this happened. These guys would kind of go, well, you know, I'm going to change my vote on this thing. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to impede this thing. No, 20, nope. I think 26 of them still were signed up to, to, to do this yeah. thing. Yeah. And, and the, one of the only senators who changed their mind was Leffler, yeah. who said, I'm not going to do it. And Leffler did it for a very simple reason. I think she felt she had nothing to lose by doing it. 
He's going to buy Georgia. He's just going to buy Georgia, exactly. Hello, Tony. How are you? Listen, do me a favor. Don't leave the house until you get this vaccine. Yeah, I know. I'm having. I, I implore anybody who Alex. Don't are you leave sick? The house. I have a teeth cleaning next week that I canceled for exactly yeah. that reason. Are you we, sick, Tony? Tony's has. I'm doing COVID. okay. I didn't need hospitalization, so I lost eight pounds. Wow. Yeah, That's I lost eight I hear pounds. People losing weight. Well, maybe it's yeah. not that bad, huh? But my mom, I'm telling you, Alex, and I can tell you guys, Alex. They think it's the steroids they gave her. She's got a breather, and also she's on a pill. If I kid you not, I had to hang up before because you know why? She starts seeing things. She just wigs out. I mean, yeah. it's like totally bizarre. She and then she calms down. I talked to the doctor. I do it. I'm not going to give her the steroid tomorrow. My yeah. kid's almost the doctor now. So she has COVID now. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. has COVID. Oh, wow. He has COVID. His brother has here. COVID. His sister has COVID. And yeah, my sister got it in school. His brother-in-law oh, has wow. COVID. Yeah, I feel all right, Ray. Though I'll the, tell you the truth, they're the Jukes family of COVID. Yeah, wow. So, yeah. And I'll tell you the truth, that was a scare, Alex. I told you, and I was about my. I don't go anywhere other than seeing. I don't go nowhere. What happened is my sister teaches in school. I got to talk low, so she yeah. And Alex is bullshit with these fucking schools. They're not testing anybody. The kids come in there. She teach in first grade. They don't test the kids. The teachers are tested random, so you don't get a true. Thing of what's going on if you're not I, I thought, uh, well, from school. what i heard i mean uh, 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 uh cuomo has said that the safest place for kids to be right now is in school because he's a it, fucking liar alex believe me when i tell you this really yep that's yeah. how we got it they closed the school down they're not testing the kids the kids whip their mask off and grab everything oh boy mm. so he's a fucking bald faced so, liar and, alex. and and while you had a bubble in your house with your mother in the bubble and you yeah. in the bubble and She's your brother and your brother in the bubble Okay. Yeah, and Alex, I'm going to tell you nothing. My brother went to Sloan for the cancer thing two, uh, a week and a half ago. He took the COVID test on Monday, cleared it on Wednesday. My sister came down with it. She went with him. She came into the house. It came into the house the weekend of like two and a half weeks ago. And that's how we got it. Because our whole house got it too. My brother in law well, well, and my two nieces. Your sister there. brought it in, right? Yep. Yeah. From the now school. your brother. That, that school closed down now. Your brother, wow. does, is he home most of the time? These days, well, he's working. He works for three one one. He's a city manager. He's been working remotely for the last a year. Okay, all right. So, so really, you had a bubble. You, your mother, bubble, and, and and your and your your brother. Yep. When sister comes into it and to she bathes it, your mother. Okay, that's why she came in. She every yeah. three days she would come in to bathe your mother. So yeah, would, I would do it a little bit, and then she so, would come in to do. So it your mother right. wouldn't get stinky. Yeah. Uh, and and which was a really nice, wonderful thing to do. But what she did is she bought the COVID into the house. She yeah. burst the bubble, you know. She did. And if if mm -hmm. she hadn't come He's over. He's distraught over it. I can tell you that. She's really. Oh, I, I imagine. Yeah. I imagine. And I tell you, I knew I had it, Alex, two weeks ago. After we got off the show, I went to bed and I was watching my mother. And I thought it was my mind. I said, eh. I, said, oh, I, said, I feel like I got the chills. I said, I got the flu shot. I said, right. Mm -hmm. And I had some sweats. So I got up right away, I took my shirt off, and I'm like, I took my temperature, yeah. and I'm like, oh, my sister messaged me, how do you feel? And I didn't want to say no. I says, I says, oh, shit, I says, I think I got this. Uh, hey, look, just, and then I had the call. Okay. Uh, Tony, just look straight ahead at me. Okay. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> oh, do my temperature. Like, I do it every night. Well, you're 93. Oh, you're 93.2. You're, you're, 93 you're okay. okay. There, there. I'm, I'm sitting over here. Huh? Yeah, it's okay. I, I'm okay now. I mean, Charlie, don't even leave the house, please. If you what, saw the way is, she reacts to the steroids and everything, don't do it. Is hey, Tony, is your sister a teacher? Yeah. yeah. Uh, 98.5. She's little kids or? Little yeah, special here. kids. Hold on, I'm going to talk to her. She's worried here. Hey, what's up, Nan? Mm. Let me see here. Hey. No, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me just uh, take my temperature here. Because uh, uh, you know what I find about those head things? If you're in a hot room... It uh, gets it goes high. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alan Alan messaged me. He's taking care of his eighty eight year old mother tonight. Mm. He'll be on the mall. Mm -hmm. Oh okay. Hope she's okay. Ninety seven nine. See, it's not even in lockstep with my with my uh, gun. Kevin, how's your mom doing? What? How's Kevin? How's your mom doing? Oh yeah. How is your mom doing, Kevin? Kevin. Sorry. How's oh, your mine? Yeah. Yeah. How's your mom doing? 
Uh, okay, thanks for asking. She's uh, she's doing okay. I've been taking her to the hospital and stuff, and she's been kicking along. Yeah. Uh, she have the stuff left and right. Does she have the China virus also? <laughs> no, no she's, been, she's been dodging it. She's been passing her tests. Oh, and I have too, so. You know, if you, if it's only one out of 10 people have the virus, one out of nine. Well, my, and I'm going to tell you something now. I really hope Trump stops like, dead for real because he's not taking me out, Alex. <laughs> I'm waiting for the announcement like uh, Walter Cronkite. The president has been shot in Dallas. Oh, stop, stop. <laughs> stop it, Tony. Throw confetti out the window. Stop it, Tony. Tony's going to get us all. <clears throat> yeah, throat. yeah, right. I, I'm going to get a knock on the door. Oh, my Mara's. God. I no more monetization. <laughs> No more monetization, secret service at my door, you know. I'm all contaminated. Nobody wants to. Alex, my neighbors on the block just wave to me now like I'm a leper. <laughs> when I get right. to know, I had the lady to still go like this. Yeah. I'm like, hi, Anna. She's hi. Okay, I'll see yeah. you in about a month. <laughs> Alex just lost his 47 cents this evening. Yeah, the 47 cents I would have made off tonight's show. <laughs> I can't, I can't well, I don't, even, I don't even monetize this show for the live version. Because uh, I just give up. Every night they would like demonetize it, and then I'd have to say you're wrong, and then they would uh, remonetize it. But I lost a couple of days of making twenty five. I took what I ate. I ate a half yeah. a chocolate cake out of my aggression. Oh really? Okay. <laughs> the lady next door left it on the step for me. Really? Cool. And then I ran. Know. Then I'm ran. Just, just in case I die, I'm gonna find You don't need to return the, the glassware. <laughs> So where, where where do we go from here? Do you th do you think, folks, uh, that uh, you know that Biden's up to the task of all the problems that he's going to have on day one? Oh God! I mean, well, he's I, hired a lot of good people. So yeah, that's yeah. the thing. He's hired the right people yeah. Yeah. so far. But my question is, you know, we have we have so many problems in this country right now. And I mean, serious problems. Uh, not the least of which is this relationship of everybody to everybody else you know that let's say 40 percent of the public is trump like all right and is resistant to anything mm -hmm. if they're resistant to wearing a mask then they're resistant to anything you have to say to them how is he going to change that how is he going to make people feel well maybe this guy is trying to change things maybe he's trying to make things better I don't, I don't know that you should worry about that. I really don't. I think on one hand, he's up against it. There are so many things wrong. But on the other hand, like FDR walked into the Depression, you know, just standing still, things are bound to get better. So, you know, in that regard, he's got nowhere to look but up. So, you know, with good people around him and good delegation, things are bound to get better and it'll look good for him, I think, in the long run. So you, I don't think you can worry about those idiots that, you know, are going to be, you know, they're going to still hold the heart on for Trump. That'll die away after a while. So what you're saying is do the best job possible. Yeah, and, just, and, you know, just look ahead. Just look forward. Don't listen to the noise and, and just do the best you can. Right. And things are bound to turn around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think yeah. when people realize that, we aren't going to be a socialist democratic society right, like they're right. all talking about right. Calm and down. that we aren't, you know, all the things that they're saying are going to happen. The guns won't get taken away. Right. You know, they'll get their guns. Right. You know, that sort of thing aren't going to happen. Well, they shouldn't Maybe worry. It'll, they, it'll, it'll, it'll calm them down a little bit. They shouldn't, they shouldn't worry about that. We're not going to take their guns away immediately. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> Right. Well, not for two eight years. years to take their guns away. No, it's it's not going to happen, and, and and all that crap that they've been feeding everybody has got to has got to fade away, and then and then maybe they'll calm down a little bit. Yeah. Well, they, you know, all, it's, that, it's that, that all that shit has been bullshit from day one, and they've been fed it and they've been brainwashed. It's got to leak out but sooner I, or later. I also love the way they say, well, you know, if, if the Democrats come in, we're going to be socialistic. By the way, where's my $2,000? Yeah, page? right. Can I have my money? Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. I mean yeah. come still on. doing it. I mean, you've got these pundits on the, on the other channels that were doing it all day today. Well, you know, Trump's still still there and he's going to be in there and there's still people that are still doing that stuff and we're all going to be led into the socialistic, you know, 
Demo when the Democrats take over and everything's going to go social, you'll see, you'll see. And I, I hope it just goes I exactly only, the opposite I way. only look as a, as a fervent, hard leftist. I would only hope and pray that Biden was a socialist. But he's not. No. Oh. And as somebody who is a socialist at heart, um, because I can't vote socialist, but I, at heart, uh, I, uh, you know, I, I, he's not, he's not a socialist. I'm telling you right now. No, he's middle of the road Democrat. Yes, well, he if is. He fixes, if he fixes the insurance and and does something good there, maybe they'll forget all that shit. You know, yeah. Congress is still run by middle of the road Democrats. Yeah, and you know, it's going to be a long time before we have socialism or social AMC democracy. will make her noise, but they'll calm her down. Well, yeah, you know, going to be the. Uh, in charge of the budget committee in the Senate. <laughs> and they thought that, that the economy was going to get better under Trump, and it really didn't get better nope. under Trump. I mean, the guy was always bad with money to begin with. It stayed the course. Yeah. yeah. It stayed the course. Pretty the much whatever markets, whatever Obama set up, pretty much the just— The bull market started in 2008. Let's see. Yeah. Who was elected in 2008? Exactly. It was handed over, yeah. 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 <laughs> My favorite from Republicans is tax and spend liberals. They love to say tax and spend <laughs> liberals. Well, let's see. The five largest deficits in the history of our country were all under Republican president. Yeah. My, oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> all government Republicans who are conscious of the deficit. Right, right. Uh, but the thing is that um, in, uh, he he likes to think that oh well look at the look at the uh, stock market look how it's gone up. Stock market is not an indicator of the economy. It's an oh. indicator of a bunch of people who invested in the uh, in the stock market. I've done very well in the stock market. I should love Donald Trump, but I know he had nothing to do with it. As a matter of fact. Worse it, yet, he points to the Dow. If you know anything about stocks, that's only 30, 30 companies. 30. <laughs> Well, he you should know, know that he went to a he went to an economic Wharton. school, went to Wharton. <laughs> but the so, fact of the matter is that um, uh, you know you've got that uh, that the Dow going up. Uh, it has. I've been checking it because you know that's where a lot of my money is in the Dow, and it has gone up considerably. I mean, it went down, and tanked horribly. And now it's back up again, and it's higher than it's ever been. It's over, over 30,000, 30, uh, and it's probably heading towards 31,000 at this point. But you know when it started jumping up? The minute yeah. Trump no longer was going to be president. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the beginning of December just shot up like crazy. Yeah. So let me just say Trump is responsible for the jump in the Dow. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday was uh, a big, another high, right? Yeah. 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 Two of my stocks went up 12 bucks. There you go. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, no, I looked at my stock today and I went, geez, you know, I mean, I took a real beating. And also last year, uh, uh, my because I have stock I, in the 401k and I'm over what is it 75 i have to have to sell off a couple of percent of it every year distribution distribution yeah yeah but i and, mean, and I the fact is that even after that i'm back higher than i was before the distribution went out you know i was hearing things from republicans about they were going to take away hamburgers did anybody <laughs> hear that line of shit what they're going to take oh, away right yeah like no more bullet. cows yeah, cows. No more cows. Yeah. yeah, hamburgers. You're not going to get your hamburgers. Where no. the fuck did they come up with these things? <laughs> yeah, my my Republican friends, they were saying they're going to take away my classic cars. Yeah. What? Oh well, yeah, that true. That because true. all that. all they're going all electric. So within oh, right, like right. five or five years, they'd be all electric, and all the gas cars they'd be turning in. I said. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I heard that too. And then you see Joe Biden driving a Corvette. Yeah, they're not right. going to do yeah. that. They're waiting for those most of those cars to just break down, not be usable anymore, be junk heaps. And uh, I actually saw a site get taken down because of that. I mean, even uh, if they do require electric cars, if you're a collector and you have a vintage car, they're not going to make you get rid of the thing. Oh, no. yeah. I'm building one right now. Yeah. 
uh, but I mean, if you have if you have a car, let, let me see here. We got we have uh, uh, Ke- uh, you know Kevin there, and he you like your cars, right? Your car yep. guy. But you have personal cars, right, in the family? Yep. Are any of them hybrids? Nope. My daughter's going to get one next year. But... Oh, okay. But what are they, older cars? It's going to be a Prius, but it's from my yeah. my father-in-law down in Arizona. He's going to give one to her that's probably 10, 12 because years Because, you know, if I bought a car tomorrow, I wouldn't get an electric because, I, you know, I don't want to have to, you know, keep looking at the electric gauge worrying that I'm going to run out of electricity and then if I have to stop and charge it up again it's going to take me several hours to get it charged um <laughs> well, if you're out here in California well, you're, you're uh, uh, Brian you're kind of giving me no am I right about that no but California everyone drives to work and they have chargers there or you come home they have chargers here I got enough trouble charging my watch every night okay <laughs> you go to Kohl's and you can charge your car while you're shopping Oh, we had yeah. a Leaf when they California. first came out, and it yeah. took like 14 hours to charge. And I was driving back from the city, and I ran out of electricity. And uh, the dashboard was like, "You must stop now! Do not drive anywhere!" <laughs> it was going crazy. I'm sweating. Oh my god, am I gonna get home? And I made it. And then my neighbor down the street was one of the guys who originally came up with the uh, the, the standards, and he said, "Oh no, we built it in, so like there's a huge buffer. Like it'll make oh. you think that you're done, and you still got like 25 miles." Oh, okay. Yeah. Remember uh, oh, Seinfeld? Yeah. Remember they they did the the used car. They did the the uh, what they you know the, the, the oh, test yeah. drive. Yeah, remember? Yeah, and Kramer yeah. had him. Let's go. Let's go. Let's keep going. Yeah. <laughs> But the fact is that that uh, um, I, I would get a hybrid in a second. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah that yeah. that's the way to go. I think that that combination for now works. I think eventually we're going to come up with a battery system that you know will go 800 miles and it can charge in no time at all. You know, and whatever. But uh, it's um, just the cost. They can do it now. It's just too expensive. So yeah, I don't. I think it's crazy to own a car when you can just rent them or use a zip car. You know, mm-hmm. if you know if you don't drive that much, I mean, what's what's the point of owning one? Well, the city's you live in the city. city's different. Yeah. Also, I don't know if I can drive a car anymore. I really don't. I you know, it's been been three years since I used a car last. Sure, you can. Sure, I can. Yeah. I just don't. Ain't I, no zip cars in Texas. I make so many mistakes yeah. just turning the show on and off now because <laughs> I'm, I'm starting to lose it. That I'm worried that driving, I'll like get behind the wheel and within ten minutes I'll smash into something, you know. So I I don't know. Uh, it's just that I haven't done it for a while. So, you know, who knows? Who We're knows? still talking about cars. Hmm? <laughs> 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 He's still talking about cars. <laughs> What's that? Oh, boy. Well, you know, all I've got to say is we wondered what 2021 was going to be like, that it was all going to be better, and look what's happened. <laughs> you know, we're off they to a do. really bad start, you know? So who who knows what's going to happen this year? It could be worse than last year. We could be Tony again. We could be reminiscing about the grand, great old days back in the twenty twenties. Yeah. That hey, was the second storming of the Capitol building since the War of eighteen twelve. Right yeah. when the British stormed the Capitol. Yeah, yep, that's absolutely <laughs> correct. Except we did it this time. We yeah. did. It. Anyway, <laughs> hey, listen. Sad. Thanks to Tony, by the way. I'm sure he had to go off and take care of his mom. It's not been pleasant for him. But we wish him well on that. Uh, 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 Robert, good seeing you again tonight. God, I I love having you here. I love having Brian here. Love having Charlie here. Dr. Doom. Jeff, thank you so much. Uh, John Larkin, thank you. You feeling good? Getting better? My head itches. Yeah, yeah. Well, other than Adam Flank. That's dandruff. And. uh, <laughs> Kevin, thank you, and thank you to Ray Renati. Thank you. A couple of nights in a row, I think, Ray. It's good. We yeah, love... I'll be back more. We love seeing you here. Thank uh, you. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a wave, big wave goodbye back at you, okay? So that we're all waving goodbye. There goes our citizen panel, and we will form another one tomorrow night. We're going to form one in just about a couple of minutes from right now when Jack Bishop does the intersection. He's going to be doing it on Skype. 
and the, uh, the thing to call is GabNet Live on Skype. GabNet Live, okay? In the meantime, uh, that's it for us for tonight. Uh, we'll see you again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, be good to each other. Be considerate. Wear a mask. Be safe out there. Night, everybody.